Hey, what's up? Matt Wyatt here, taking a look at this Kentucky-Mississippi State film. Offensively, it was impressive. They got some guys involved in the flow of the game that hadn't really been as involved yet this year. And on defense, they had some guys who really played well. And I think Todd Grantham may have had his best day as Mississippi State's D coordinator. This is a little longer film study. It's 13 plays that kind of take you through the big plays of the game chronologically. So stay with me. Long film study. I think you'll enjoy it, though. Here we go. All right, start off by looking at the first offensive possession of the game for State. No score. And I'm going to highlight this guy a bunch today. That's Jordan Thomas, the big 6'7", 280-pound tight end, but they're using him as a wide receiver all day. He's going to block out in front of a screen and watch him pop the corner, 21 Westry, when he comes up there. Here comes a play, throws out there, boom, pops the corner. Now watch him push. That's going to be a one-yard gain. He pushes it forward for six yards. It's a seven-yard play, and six of it is Jordan Thomas pushing him down the field. Very next play, they come back. Got three receivers up here, and Jordan Thomas, the big guy, is the singled-up receiver to the short side of the field. They're going to run the back out. So when Nick puts his eyes here, but he comes back to this side to take the one-on-one, -on -one, the defender is out of the way, and you got a wide-open curl route to a big guy running a wide receiver route at 280 pounds. All right, later on this first drive, State got themselves in a third down and 12, and look how they spread the field and empty. Three receivers this side. Look how wide the farthest guy is. Both guys are outside the numbers, and the guy up here is basically standing on the sideline. So Kentucky went five for five man-to-man -man with one free safety, and it means they're going to rush five here against your five offensive linemen, so they're not going to blitz you or have numbers against you, anything like that. And on the snap of the ball, look what Fitzgerald gets. Up here, he's getting a twist outside and in. They're not necessarily going to pressure, but he feels it. And what State's trying to do is get to that first down marker. they got curl routes with everybody underneath at or just beyond the first down stick. So when pressure comes, he leaves. And what he did right there is he had a chance. He, by moving, he gave himself a chance to run if he wanted to on third and long. But he can also find this underneath to Dedrick Thomas, and he does for a first down, and Bulldogs later scored. Okay, so now State's up 7 nothing. The ensuing possession for Kentucky, they're in a second down, and it's empty for them. They're going to run a screen, but here's what I want you to watch. This is an incredible play by Jeffrey Simmons in there at what is essentially the nose tackle. He balls on this hash, and they're going to throw a screen out here, and that guy with his hand down, after making a step forward, is going to be the first guy to hit the ball carrier out here on the screen. It's pretty incredible. Motion. Quarterback snap, and so look at Simmons. He stands up and sees it's going to be a screen, understands and kind of sees what he's getting. Now watch him run the play down. Remember the ball snapped on this hash. He's got his hand down. Now look here. Boom, it makes a tackle for loss. One more time again, there he is in a three-point stance. Watch in full speed how fast he reacts to this play. Touch the guard, get down the line, run him down, and hit him for a one-yard loss. That is impressive. Here's a call in the game I really didn't like. State's up 7 nothing, and trying to tack it on, take control, which they eventually did. And they've driven the ball near midfield or trying to get it across, and they get a big play. But keep your eye on the running back, Nick Gibson. Has an excellent block on a linebacker, but they called holding here. The first thing that he did is hit him and knocks the linebacker back. And you're going to see that he hits him back and he falls on his back. Somehow that's holding. Gets called and it takes away a huge completion and first down in Kentucky territory. Again, you know, this arm's inside. Now, as he spins and goes backwards and falls back, you're going to see the left arm of Gibson. He kind of got him hooked a little bit. And I guess that's what the official sees. So when that drive stalled, after the holding call, they punted it back to Kentucky. Kentucky has the ball here in their drive. They've driven it down here thanks to one big run from the QB uh, down near the 20, and it's third down. This is the scoring play on the fumble. And see what Kentucky did? They have two by two, basically, because that's your tight end lined up right there. And that's a key because that's going to put him one-on-one -on -one here against Leo Lewis in coverage. It's covered two. It's cover two, and you got two safeties back there. 
you know, corners are up and you've got zone underneath it. But it does match up Leo Lewis, one of two linebackers on the field because it's nickel with the tight end, and he's going to get his back turned to the play. The other thing that happens is the outside rush gets way upfield and deep, and also both your tackles, Simmons and Hoyette, wind up over here to the left of the quarterback in their rush. And now there's that lane for him to escape. Now there's Leo Lewis covering that tight end, and he's anticipating some pursuit and help underneath. He's also trying to look over his shoulder, and I don't think he can really see at this point. And now the quarterback's off and running. And here's Mark McLaurin, your leading tackler in the game. This is a heck of a play now to come over here and knock this ball loose. Just knocks it loose, and it's recovered by a Kentucky player. So State did what they have to do after Kentucky ties it. They come right back with a nine-play drive of their own and uh, take the lead in the ball game. You're going to put Donald Gray in motion to the other side of the formation. And when they do that, they're going to have some runoffs vertical here and bring Donald back across to try to get that defense crossed up. Now, first thing, watch the protection, and particularly watch the center, Elton Jenkins, here. He had a great day in pass pro. Gets stood up but hangs in there, pushes him back, and look at the catch by Donald Gray. Now, when you see it coming from the other way, you'll see what he saw. He gets held up. Right there, the linebacker turns back on him and holds him up a little bit, but makes his way across. The ball's in the air at this point. He knows it, and this is just out of the corner of his eye. He knows I've got a defender right here and watch him react and play the ball in the air. So, situational football. State took that lead 10-7. to Kentucky got the football with uh, under three minutes, right at three minutes left in the half. And State knew if you can get a three and out right here and get the ball for your team, you can really take control if your offense could score in the locker room going in because they're going to get the ball to start the second half. So you get it in a third and one. Kentucky brings their heavy package in and motions in. So then you're going to have receiver, tight end, H-back, and tight end on the other side as well. This is the guy they're trying to play action to. So at this point, it looks like run, right, to the defense. Quarterbacks showing the ball to the running back. And look at true freshman linebacker Willie Gay. His eyes are right there looking for this run play on third and one. Watch as soon as he sees the fake. In an instant, he has seen the fake, and now look at his eyes. There's true freshman Willie Gay looking up his responsibility in pass coverage. Now, there's one more thing happening that's important to this play. Jeffrey Simmons is going to force the issue with the quarterback, trying to slip him out. Gay has seen it and is going to cover it, and Jeffrey Simmons' pursuit of the quarterback is going to make the QB throw it a little earlier than he wants to. And then it's a great play downfield to tip it away and get a stop and get the ball back. All right, because of that big stop by your defense, you get the football back with 2.15 to go until halftime, plenty of time to score. And this is the first play of the drive, and it goes to Kylan Hill, a true freshman running back. He's going to get it here and counter. They're going to run that counter. And they ran this a bunch in the game, pulling their tackles this time it's the left tackle, Greg Island. But there's a couple of other things to watch on the play. First, you see how they do with the quarterback when he gives a football. They want everybody to think the ball's going that way and get that way. Then he's going to follow this block of the tackle, the pulling tackle back this way. Got a great block on the uh, nose there by Elton Jenkins. He had a heck of a ball game. Calhoun gets up and gets in the way. And the other thing is right here on the play side, that is Jordan Thomas, that 6'7 tight end, 280, hits the corner and drives him about 12 yards down the field. The hole is there, big run on first down. So, again, the way this drive culminates with about a minute left, you're up three, State got itself in a fourth and one, and look at what they did. Tight end over here in the boundary, three receivers to the field, and they wanted to run a pitch option off the end line of scrimmage this way. But what Kentucky does is, they go 3-4, got a three down lineman, four linebackers, and then toes on the line of scrimmage, man across. There's nobody back here on fourth and one, so they're expecting some kind of run. So right off the bat, you really have what you want, and that's blocks happening out here on the edge. The uh, right side of your offensive line is doing its job, and so they've left alone uh, Allen, 41. You want to pitch off of him if you're going to run the option. There's a little instinct going on here for Nick Fitzgerald. The corner on that side has run himself out, and he's the contain. I think Nick 
just feels that there is a lane to the backside. If he attacks Allen and pitches this football on the option, I think you're going to get a first down at least. But he just senses something and can feel that contain has been lost on the backside, and he's out the gate just kind of running the daylight, and Fitz is gone. So that's two weeks in a row that Mississippi State's defense absolutely really had to have a stop, a three and out late in the first half to get the opposing offense off the field, get the ball back for your team, a chance to extend the lead and really take control of the game, go into the locker room. They did it against BYU, and they were able to accomplish that again against Kentucky. And if you remember in years past with other defensive coordinators, it was an issue. The the two-minute situations just before the half and at the end of games, Grantham's unit has been really good at that the last couple of weeks. They did it again against Kentucky. So you're up 10 to start the third quarter, getting the football over here on offense, and you've gotten yourself in a second and 16. You've got to get some of that yardage back to be able to convert if you want to really emphatically take control of the ball game. And what do they do? Ball on the left hash, and they single up that same guy, Jordan Thomas, over here one-on-one in the boundary. Kentucky just goes with a soft cover two. The same thing you saw in the first half. Going to go flat curl over here and give him a chance to work against a smaller corner. Thomas runs off the ball, pushes him up, open on the corner, and Fitzgerald drives it in there. So at the end of that drive, they wound up converting. They're at a second and eight down here near the goal line. And does this look familiar? Three to the wide side of the field, Jordan Thomas into the boundary. And what Fitzgerald sees, this is really smart uh, decision-making of where to go with the ball with him. What Kentucky has done, they have a 3-4 defense in the ball game. But you know you've got pressure coming here, and even on alignment, you can tell this is man-to-man right here on Thomas. This is zone over here. And State's going double moves by everybody. Everybody's putting on some kind of double move to get open, and Thomas does up top, pushes him out, and then back to the slant. And the big guy, 6'7", 280, working like a receiver. It's just a mismatch. Pushes away from the defender and gets a TD. When State got that big lead in the third quarter, especially on third downs, Todd Grantham began to draw up ways to get after the quarterback. And on this particular play, look at the defense. Three down linemen, two linebackers standing in the hole, and six DBs in a dime cover two. One safety, two safeties, and it's a dime cover two zone. Watch what they do with the defensive front. When they see drop back, Sweat, with his hand down, is going to work to the inside. Simmons is going to work this way, and they're going to bring both linebackers, Green there, and then followed by Des Harris there, looping around to try to pressure the quarterback. So there goes Sweat to the inside. Here comes Green here. He's going to pressure, and Johnson's going to step up. When he steps up, he's going to run right into Des Harris, who has also looped around as well. And you get a big sack on third down. Just a little bit of a closer look. Sweat's going to go inside. After two linebackers have lined up here, look at what Grantham drew up, both to the outside as these guys work this way. Big old loop to try to pressure the QB on third down. There go the linebackers. Sweat had a great game pressuring the quarterback, came away with tackles for multiple tackles for loss and sacks. Here he pressures him into green, and then the quarterback's going to run right into Des Harris. Now, if you remember, I told you in the preview video this week that Kentucky is a screen team, and they want to run screens. This was a big play where they try to run a screen, and Trey Brown forces the issue getting after the quarterback, and Braxton Hoyette, a really smart play on his part. When they turn him loose, he remembers, I've been told, they're a screen team, and he just sits and gets his hand on the football on the pass. So you sense it, they've turned him loose. Trey Brown's going to get the QB and force the issue. Hoyette realizes, hey, they've turned me loose for a reason. He settles, gets his hand on the football, tips him to himself, and you got a big man INT. See him there, he knows it's green, tips the football, big play. Well, the dagger in the game, up 31-7, was another defensive play, the pick six by Gary Green. Look what Kentucky does. They go three by one. And Mississippi State, look how they line up. You've got that dime package again, six DBs, only three defensive linemen, 
and only two linebackers on the field. Everybody else is a DB. And they line it up just before the snap to make it look like it must be man on this side and maybe some type of zone with a safety over the top on the other side. And right before the snap, watch them rotate it. Green runs out. Defender backs up. Safety goes back there. And now it's totally changed. For the QB, if he sees it in a split second, now this looks like zone as opposed to man. And now this looks like they're going to bring a guy in man. And that's exactly what State's going to do. On the snap, corner blitz. That's Cam Dantzler on the Cobra. They're going to run the safety McLaurin over there and zone it back on this side. And it not only confuses the quarterback, it confuses the receivers who are trying to read the coverage. Now you've got two receivers running into the same area and a free corner on the quarterback. He knows he's going to get hit, and he throws it up for grabs. Big hit, and Gary Green picks it off and is the beneficiary. Grantham and a defensive staff moving guys around, confusing the players on the other side to create a big turnover. All right, so that's how State got it done, and obviously the challenge steps up another notch this week as they hit the road and go to College Station this weekend, take on the Aggies. Really highly recruited bunch of kids over there, and they showed it when they went toe-to-toe with Alabama a few weeks ago. So State's got to execute even better, practice even harder, and be ready to go on the road. Hope you enjoyed the film study. If you did, do me a favor, like it here on my Facebook page, and follow me here on Facebook because I put these videos out pretty much every day. And uh, also find me on Instagram and Twitter. Would you follow me there also? I am Radio Wyatt. All right, thanks for watching. See you next time.